Hi, I'm Erin Saberty. I'm Operating Partner at People Tech Partners. Hi, I'm Roslyn Fogarty. I work with People Partners Consulting. I'm a lead consultant for them uh, and have a deep, almost 20 year background uh, in HR. Well, Roslyn, thank you for sitting down with me today. We're in Vegas, day three, I think, for most people <laughs> at HR We're all Transform. surviving. I know, barely, but it seems to be going really well. Lots of interesting conversation and thought leadership happening here. I'd love to sit down with you. I want to kind of hear a little bit more about your background in the people space, yep. kind of how you started there, what brought you to that department, that you know function, how do you do in that role, what do you do, and kind of why did you stay? So I always love to tell my story and that I think I'm I'm a rarity and that I actually went to college and my <laughs> degree is in HR essentially um, which is surprising to a lot of people so uh, I have a degree in industrial organizational psychology um, essentially HR for business or psychology for business and I started you know I feel like kind of most people's coming up story I started as a coordinator um, way, way back when, just sort of worked my way in, you know, in sort of learning about the field and really just am super passionate about HR and people and um, I always say my, my passion stems from people spend more time at work with their coworkers and than they do their family, which is so very surprising and so um, my mission has always been how can I have an impact uh, in an environment and space where people are spending, you know, a ton of their time to make it feel like it's an inclusive opportunity for growth, kind of rich um, environment uh, where people want to stay and continue and have a good experience because they are spending so much time, you know, in this uh, one environment. So. That's awesome. It's interesting. Anytime I'm talking with leaders in this space, um, when I see that passion light up, it seems like it's a very mission-driven um, area to be in and to kind of do that. So um, just thinking about your um, work with People Partners Consulting and the lead consultant that you are there yeah. and the kind of perspective you must gain from working with so many different organizations um, as well as your roles in the past. I know you were with IDEO and some other really great companies. What do you see as the biggest challenges that these companies are facing or having to address on a regular basis? Yeah, you know, it's it's really interesting because I feel like over the years, it's the, the problems and the challenges that are that we're facing haven't shifted, I think, a ton in terms of we see a lot of projects that are coming through in learning and development and it's it's all about this focus on you know manager training and you know there's you know a ton of statistics out there especially the you know recent Gallup study about people leave companies because of managers you know 100% if you have a bad manager or a bad experience um, you know you leave that versus the company itself and so just still seeing an emphasis on the importance of development I think it's just it is evolved in terms to how we're delivering that development to employees and that is something that I see in consulting time and time again people are asking us how you know how do we train our managers um, I think the shift in the L&D space is just more around now, how do we take sort of the traditional, we train our leaders, we train our high potential employees, and how do we spread that out over all employees? And I feel like that's been a really refreshing and nice change, uh, I think especially with people tech partners, to see those companies yeah. come into this space and really have that emphasis on it's not just sort of the, the top performers that are getting uh, that opportunity to be trained. So I think, you know, learning and development is a, a continuous one. You know, at least in the Bay, there's still that war for talent. And so moving into how do companies hire, you know, and be distributed um, is another big challenge and, and just sort of all the things that come with having a distributed workforce and what that looks like and what that sets up. So I would say those those are the big challenges is how in in a very radically different space do you continue to have the same type of programs and opportunities for people that aren't necessarily sitting or you know yeah. are face to face with you and I feel like that's a, a, a challenge especially 
um, with startups is how do we have you know technology that is working specifically for that employee experience to make sure that it, it, it is um, consistent across no matter you know whether I'm greeting you on first day first to person mm -hmm. or you're you know sort of signing in on day one and having these virtual meetings um, so I would say those are kind of the three things mm -hmm. that I'm one. yeah that I'm um, seeing it's really interesting and, and I myself I've been a remote or virtual employee for four to five years now, um, part-time, and then now I've been full-time for four years. Um, and so definitely the challenges I've seen that everyone faces and building a culture and doing that. What do you see for the future of that? Because it's always really interesting to me to have this conversation because a lot of this perspective depends on the role that an HR leader is sitting in at that time, whether yep. their organization is remote and virtual friendly or not. Um, whereas someone like yourself, having the people partners consulting perspective of what a lot of companies are facing and this kind of broad stroke that you can see, what do you see as the future? Maybe with, I'd love to touch on remote and virtual teams, but yep. then also just the broader, like what's coming, you know? Yep. In terms of the remote virtual teams, it, you know, in the past it was, you had like satellite offices or you know and so then you built a culture what I used to call like a micro culture for wherever that particular office was and now really it's about holistically looking at how are you creating and designing an employee experience across many you know different spectrums you know you've got inclusivity not just you know in the main general terms but so I think you Again, coming from IDEO, that experience, you know, is how do you design for all these different facets and still make it feel individualistic and but yet feel like it's this cohesive part of tying into the culture and creating this culture across a lot. And I think that's something, you know, that HR leaders maybe in the past, like, di you know, you didn't have to have that. It was sort of like, what are we doing in New York? Okay, that's New York. What are we doing in San Francisco? And it's more, I think, taking the lens of this holistic approach and designing for all and whatever that yeah. means uh, yeah. for, for that particular thing. Um, I think as far as what's in the future, it's about how do you design that experience and, and start to individualize that so it doesn't feel like I'm just sort of plugging into this mass, whatever it may be. Diversity inclusion is, is sort of at the forefront of that and, and whatever that means for that particular individual. So I think there's a, a lot of designing that's happening around that. Was it 70 or 65% of like companies will have some sort of remote workforce wow. in it, which is crazy because I remember three years ago sitting at a conference about the future of work in HR and they were like, no, like there's no, like it's 28%, like there's no way it's not gonna that, catch on. yeah, it's not going to catch on. It's just a tech thing. It's just a Silicon Valley thing. It's, you know, it's not really real. Um, and just in my mind, remembering on the panel of like, I don't think that's true. Yeah. Like I have a, fe <laughs> a feeling. And then here we are, you know, that's three crazy. years later yeah. and you've got companies like Envision, Zapier, you know, Digital Ocean that have you know, Envision is all 100%. 800 plus yeah, employees. Yeah, 800 plus employees distributed. Um, so I think that's just, it's really changing the landscape of what it means to be an employer and I think also what it means to be an employee. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I'd love to dive in a little bit because as I'm, as I'm hearing you talk about this, basically what you're describing is that the people role is a very big job and it's getting bigger <laughs> um, in that, you know, before maybe you're, you're handling, you know, uh, I loved uh, Natasha Kim Carr talked about, you know, belly buttons and seats, you know, yeah. you're handling belly buttons and seats and belly trying to figure buttons, out yeah. how that's going to work, you know? And now it's, it's this, it's a changing and evolving beast, right? Because it's not only do I have to manage culture, I have to manage microcultures and I have to yep. hand in, handle, you know, people working from home and are we including them and, yeah. and lots of other things that are going on. So. I, just, I don't know if you have any comments about that, but how are you seeing this role evolve and change and expand? It's probably cliche to say, but like the whole strategic partnership, I mean, I started in HR 20 years ago and HR 20 years ago was very much about the administrative part of, you know, I'm gonna help you with your payroll, I'm gonna help you with your benefits and I'm gonna take whatever I have and, you know, kind of take it off the shelf. So for me, when I think about HR and where it's, it is now, I get excited, I, it's amazing. 
to really be, I think, at a, you know, at a place where you're, it is a, an important role. I think we see it every day, at least in the consulting business of people and companies are wanting HR much, much earlier than they ever were before, which is so exciting that leaders are thinking about that just as much as they're thinking about their finance person that they're bringing on. And so I think it's it's the impact that HR has on a company. Again, people are a company's biggest asset. And so to be in a seat, in a role where you're directly impacting how well the business can do through what you're designing for people is, is pretty amazing. Um, and I, and just stepping into that, uh, at this point in time is, it's just like, it's, it's like sort of this like proud moment <laughs> yeah. of like, yes, we've been telling people this, you know, all this time. Uh, and so to finally see it coming to fruition, you know, in just the amount of time it's taking to find good, uh, HR or talent people, um, because they're just in so high demand right now. It's kind of like a very proud moment of like, yes, it, you know, we should have been this all the way, <laughs> yeah. you know, along. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that. And obviously with my work with People Tech Partners, mm -hmm. that's a lot of what, you know, we're excited about is, is that the industry and industries seem to be catching on to this, the importance of the people leader in the people space and are reaping those benefits when they give that yeah. attention and, and a focus. I know you've been involved with People Tech Partners for a long time. Yeah. Um, and so... Just tell me about that and your engagement there and how you see that community and network supporting and, and changing and impacting the future of work. Wow. I mean, it is such a powerful group. I mean, I, I'm so honored to, to be a part of it. And even, you know, early on knowing Kara and Robbie from different paths um, in HR, I'm always a geek in, in terms of HR technology and so really was, you know, always it's been my passion to find like good tools to help us do our jobs better and to have the opportunity to one, uh, I think look at technology very, very early on just as Kara was on the stage yesterday talking about like, let me tell you what trends are coming your way via the companies that we're seeing, you know, come to us um, to, you know, to get into People Tech Partners. So there's just that early access to technology is really amazing. And I think there's just, there's this really great, just sort of mentorship aspect of working with these companies because being on the other side and being sold to, it's great to have an opportunity to tell them like, this is how you should handle approaching HR leaders. And these are the questions that you should be asking of your product if you want to be successful and you want your product to be viable and, and for people to use it. And so I think there's just this very natural partnership that happens between the companies and the advisors. Um, and it's just, it's such a unique space and opportunity on both sides that just doesn't exist. Um, and so I think there's that, which is, you know, an amazing opportunity. And I think just as a subset of that, the community within People Tech Partners mm -hmm. is amazing <laughs> and so much fun. And it's an opportunity for us to come together um, in a way that we're all busy and we've all are, you know, focused on, on world, our business you know. <laughs> <laughs> taking over the world. Yes. <laughs> Um, and so it's just a really great way for us to come together um, and be sounding boards for each other that when I was in advertising and Kara can probably attest to this, everything was very secretive. Everything was very confidential. People didn't share information um, because, you know, you were directly competing with each other. And so coming into such an open environment where, you know, someone says I need a handbook super quickly and like five people will respond and be like here's my handbook like take it borrow it like whatever you need to do just to have each other as a community has been I feel like a, just a nice subset of like what is actually happening yeah. you know yeah. uh, further beyond that um, and there's just some great friendships that I've you know formed um, as being part of that and some great like peer mentors mentors that have come out of that um, and again, that's not necessarily the purpose right. of the group, um, but it's, we definitely like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's been great. And just kind of thinking about the power of collaboration that um, I've seen, even in the you know this last six months or a year yeah. that we've been kind of focusing on some initiatives, I've been really impressed with the way that you know people tech partners will really come in on some specific initiatives that are like 
important and trending and, and impacting a lot of people. Um, examples we have like uh, parental inclusion, we've, we've done a whole lot around that. Um, we've looked at you know the, the aging workforce and how do we address that and what do we do. Um, also. Um, most recently, I know was the collaboration on kind of this compensation idea and yeah. the idea of how do we how do we as a group <coughs> similarly like help. I, I need I need information in this area. I need the data. It's historically been secretive or very yeah. hard to get or locked in expensive. a tower. Expensive. Yes. Yes. Yeah, super. <laughs> locked expensive. in a tower with a golden key. You yeah. Know, all of those things. How do we do that? So I just want to give you kind of a, a chance to tell a little bit more about what. You know, you and people like partners are doing yeah. to try to unlock that and create that power of collaboration. Yeah, I mean that's that is that's the really great thing is if you identify somewhere where there's a gap. So, for example, what we're doing with the compensation is when we were in advertising, the one thing yeah. <laughs> that people shared was we did this amazing uh, sort of hive mind comp survey where you felt like the data was real. Uh, you knew who was participating. You knew that the jobs were just like the jobs you know that you had in your local agency. And so, what I've really enjoyed is, okay, I'm identifying that there's a gap in information. Uh, what we're getting and the tools we have aren't super great. And so, um, what we've done is say, like, why don't we create our own? Um, let's make it ourselves. If what we're seeing out there from a cost perspective and a data perspective is not you know fitting to our needs let's go create it ourselves and so that's exactly what we're doing with the compensation survey our hopes is you know to bring people together and have them participate in um, in this and and have it be cost effective for companies because having access to this information only helps employees helps companies um, you know from a pay equity standpoint you can really dig into numbers for you know a low cost to see um, where your data is fitting in that, and so we're hoping to to do that in a way where it's accessible to a lot more people via just participating in the survey. Then you know now you often see it's it's a you know Radford Option Impact are really the only two options yeah. um, that are out there. You know there's some other on the fringes, but I think the the whole goal is like creating something for our community that is accessible and that people can use and, and kind of it's I think about it like a Kickstarter we're like hey who wants to join <laughs> <laughs> the more people that join right. you know the better the data will be but it's it is that sort of like hive collaboration of, of leveraging the group um, and creating a tool that's going to be useful for them and, and useful for other companies. Very cool.